In this lecture, we're going to discuss the process of a muscle contraction. We will begin with the initiation of the muscle contraction at the neuromuscular junction and end with the interaction between the actin and myosin myofilaments. A muscle contraction occurs because actin and myosin slide past each other. We call this the sliding filament model. Let's begin by recapping the parts of the neuromuscular junction. Beginning with the motor neuron, you have the axon terminal. And within the axon terminal, you have synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter. Also on the axon terminal, you have voltage-gated calcium ion channels. The membrane of the axon terminal is sometimes referred to as the presynaptic membrane. And finally, surrounding the axon terminal, you'll have free-floating calcium ions. Next, we'll take a look at all of the structures that are associated with the muscle fiber. The motor neuron synapses with the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber. This area is sometimes referred to as the motor end plate or postsynaptic membrane. At the motor end plate or sarcolemma, you'll find chemical gated sodium ion channels. The space between the motor neuron and the motor end plate is called the synaptic cleft. Within the synaptic cleft, you will find free floating sodium ions. So now that we've gone over the parts, let's go over what happens at the neuromuscular junction. First, an action potential travels down to the axon terminal. This action potential stimulates the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels, allowing calcium ions to diffuse into the axon terminal. These calcium ions then stimulate synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter to fuse to the presynaptic membrane of the axon terminal. The neurotransmitter then diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds to the receptor found on a chemical gated sodium ion channel. Once the neurotransmitter is bound to the receptor of a chemical gated sodium ion channel, the chemical gated sodium ion channel opens, allowing sodium ions to diffuse across the sarcolemma. The diffusion of sodium ions across the sarcolemma creates a new action potential in the muscle fiber. The newly created action potential will then travel down the sarcolemma and into the T-tubule. From the T-tubule, the action potential will then make its way into the terminal cisternae. The action potential stimulates the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels, allowing calcium ions to diffuse out of the terminal cisternae. Calcium ions that diffuse out of the terminal cisternae will be replenished by the calcium ions stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And as long as the voltage-gated calcium ion channels remain open, calcium ions will be able to diffuse out of the terminal cisternae. The calcium ions that diffuse out of the terminal cisternae will move into the sarcomere and bind to troponin, which is a part of the actin myofilament. By calcium binding to troponin, troponin changes configuration, pulls on tropomyosin, and exposes the active binding site of geactin. Exposure of the active binding site of geactin allows the head of the myosin myofilament to bind to the active binding site. The binding of the myosin head to the active binding site of geactin is called a cross bridge. Next, ADP and phosphate are released from the myosin head. The release of ADP and phosphate from the myosin head changes the configuration of the myosin head from an upright position to a bent position. We call this the working stroke. The working stroke pulls on the actin myofilament causing actin and myosin to slide past one another. Next, ATP binds to the myosin head. The binding of ATP to the myosin head causes the myosin head to detach from the active binding site of geactin. This is called detachment. And finally, ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate in a process known as ATP hydrolysis. The breaking down of ATP into ADP and phosphate through the process of ATP hydrolysis reconfigures the myosin head from a bent position to an upright position so that another cross bridge can be performed. We call this final step reconfiguration. The movement of the myofilaments past one another involves the steps cross bridge, working stroke, detachment, and reconfiguration. This is known as the sliding filament model. So let's put it all together and take a look at a muscle contraction starting at the neuromuscular junction and ending with the myofilaments. First, an action potential travels down a motor neuron to the axon terminal. The action potential then stimulates the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels, allowing calcium ions to diffuse into the axon terminal.
The diffusion of calcium ions into the axon terminal causes synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter to fuse to the presynaptic membrane. The fusion of synaptic vesicles to the presynaptic membrane releases neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. As the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft, it seeks out a receptor on a chemical-gated sodium ion channel. When the neurotransmitter binds to the receptor of a chemical-gated sodium ion channel, the chemical-gated sodium ion channel opens, allowing sodium ions to diffuse across the sarcolemma, or postsynaptic membrane. The diffusion of sodium ions across the membrane creates a new action potential in the muscle fiber. The newly created action potential then travels along the sarcolemma and into the T-tubule. From the T-tubule, the action potential then travels into the terminal cisternae and stimulates the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels. When voltage-gated calcium ion channels are open, calcium ions are able to diffuse out of the terminal cisternae and into the sarcomere. If more calcium ions are needed during the muscle contraction, the sarcoplasm reticulum, which stores calcium, will release calcium into the terminal cisternae. When in the sarcomere, calcium will seek out the actin myofilament. Specifically, the calcium ion will seek out troponin. When calcium binds to troponin, troponin changes configuration and pulls on tropomyosin, thereby exposing the active binding site of G-actin. With the active binding site exposed, the head of the myosin myofilament is able to bind to the active binding site of G-actin. This is called a cross bridge. Next, ADP and phosphate pop off the myosin head, changing the configuration of the myosin head from an upright position to a bent position. This is called the working stroke. After the working stroke, an ATP molecule created from a mitochondria will attach to the myosin head. The binding of ATP to the myosin head causes the myosin head to detach from the active binding site of G-actin. We call this detachment. And finally, in order for the myosin head to be able to perform another cross bridge, the myosin head must change configuration from being bent to being upright. To accomplish this reconfiguring of the myosin head, ATP must be broken down into ADP and phosphate through a process known as ATP hydrolysis. We call this step reconfiguration. Once the myosin head has returned to an upright position, a new cross bridge can be performed, and a muscle contraction will continue.